We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello, everyone. Okay, it's working. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much for joining us here today uh, at this session about the youth engagement and youth initiatives. In the several years uh, from now, the youth engagement has become a very important part of the IGF community. And in this session, we would like to put in the spotlights the initiatives that achievements and activity deserves the special recognition. The members of them has been active in the different areas of the internet governance, and those activity has, bring, has brought a lot of spectacular results. So today with us, we have Elizabeth Schauerman and Demetria Lee, from Youth X Policymakers, Marco Paloski from Generation Connect Europe, who will tell us about Digital Youth Jam Project. We have with us also Aileen Sias from Youth Coalition on Internet Governance and Juan Payero Valesquez from ISOC Youth Seek. So firstly, I would like to give the floor to Elizabeth Schauerman and Demetria Lee from the German Informatics Society. The floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. And it would be wonderful if we could also have our slides, Sufal. I think you have them perfect. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful. <laughs> so um, I'm Elisabeth. This is Dimitri. We both work at the German Informatics Society. And uh, in 2019, just to give you a bit of background, um, it was us who had the honor of um, hosting the Youth ITF Summit in Berlin when the ITF was taking place. And um, going off from that time, um, we have developed this year a program which builds on several objectives. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, because always there is a need for youth support in internet governance for you all are aware you are probably also working on this to some extent or, or another and um, what has also been identified in the past few years specifically in IGF context is that political decision makers regulators specifically parliamentarians also need to be involved uh, in these discussions and so we were asked to kind of think these things together to bring on the same table uh, the very engaged youth, both those who are already involved in internet governance spheres, but also those who are new to the topic and uh, create an eye level policy dialogue between political decision makers, but also decision makers in, uh, in the private sector environment, because those are also very influential in how we can use the internet um, as well. And our goal always is um, to, to keep this an open process, very diverse perspectives and backgrounds. And I think um, it worked beautifully this year um, because uh, also going to the next slide, please. Right. <laughs> because of the current situation of the pandemic, uh, we set this out as a fully virtual program, which means there are some barriers still. So you need to have um, uh, technical infrastructure and um, it, the times are more convenient to some than to others, but it was a very open process. Anyone could apply or submit an, uh, an expression of interest and then um, participate. And we were really um, overrun by people who wanted to be in this. Um, we had over 1,500 applicants from from all world regions and uh, from 84 countries in total. And then we had this tough choice of, of um, selecting around 60 who, who were then invited to, to join this program. We wanted to keep it 
big enough so that we are not exclusionary, but we have to be exclusionary to some extent so that the people in the program uh, have the opportunity to really get something out of this, right? And um, at the same time, while we um, gathered the, the young people between 16 and 30 years of age who, who then participated, we also reached out to parliamentarians, to decision makers to join us in the different phases and also technical experts in on the topics that I will deliberate on in a minute. And um, we also, and Dimitri will speak more on this um, later, is that we wanted to structure this in a way that kind of made sense for everyone involved. So we started with a capacity building phase so that everyone could get a shared understanding of what internet governance is, what the context is that we are in, and also on the topics that we are going to talk about. And then you had this policy discussion phase where in several roundtables, the young people and the policymakers were brought together. And following that, or also in parallel, um, we had a policy development phase where, where the youth ambassadors uh, worked together very closely and uh, came up with policy papers that also Dimitri will elaborate on. And now we're in this beautiful transfer phase where we can tell you about those things and this will go on with all the ambassadors um, really reaching out into their networks to, to spread their, their messages and ideas. Uh, next slide, please. Um, if you want to know more about the people who were part of this, I advise you to go on our Twitter uh, because we all we um, made small presentations for all of them, uh, the 60 people who were involved in this, coming from all different backgrounds and experiences ranging from, I think, 17 to 30 um, and all being wonderful experts in their, in their own fields. Um, so I think many of them, or at least a number of them is already also here in Katowice. So if you want to connect with them, there's certainly an opportunity to do so. Next slide, please. Just a few words on the topics that we selected or kind of co-selected with the people who applied, because we asked them um, out of the key themes that were um, proposed by the multi-stakeholder multi advisory group uh, for the IGF 2021, what the young people wanted to focus on. And then we picked the four that most found interesting. And we always add something on internet governance um, on a meta level so that we know what we are talking about. So um, in the end, uh, what we did is that we conducted workshops and, um, and roundtables on inclusive internet governance ecosystems, internet access and accessibility, content media and literacy, and privacy protection of vulnerable groups. Also security, there were a lot of, of aspects in there, but what really came to show is that young people are really part of these discussions. And now I would like to hand it over to Dimitria, who will tell you more about how we did this in on a format level. Well, cool, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, would you go? No, that's the right side. Okay. Um, so like Elizabeth said, it was difficult to choose once we had so many applicants. But by the time we started the workshop phase in the at the end of August, we had 60 uh, participants, 60 youth ambassadors who then participated in the four corresponding uh, workshops that yeah, corresponded to the four topics mentioned by Elizabeth. Um, we asked that people who self-identified as newcomers to topics in internet gover governance attend the first workshop on inclusive internet governance ecosystems, which included a, an introductory um, talk that featured a sort of a history of internet governance. And that was sort of the first um, introduction, although all of the workshops were made accessible to both people who were encountering these ideas for the first time, but also people who had a little bit more experience. The workshops all followed the same format where the first 30 minutes or so uh, featured two to three experts who gave an introduction to their field of study and left room for questions and a small discussion with these experts, which was then continued into smaller breakout room discussions where um, some more 
invited networking experts were um, helped groups of smaller groups of participants fill out a Google Doc that we prepared for them. And this Google Doc sort of allowed them to collect their thoughts and positions on the topics. Um, again, with some guidance from someone with a little bit more experience. Uh, this Google Doc then kind of laid the foundation for them to make their opening statements at the roundtables. Um, in order to continue onto the roundtable phase where they met with uh, policymakers, two to three policymakers um, per roundtable, again, four of them corresponding to the four topics um, that also corresponded to the workshops. Uh, yeah, so the Google Docs were the outcomes of the workshops that then allowed them to state their policy demands and positions that they wanted to present to the um, policymakers at the roundtables. They had to attend three out of four of the workshops in order to move on to that phase. They were also permitted to attend two and then write an essay if they weren't able to make it to all four. Um, so by the time that we were starting the roundtables, about 45 participants had met the criteria in order to continue on to this um, sec section. Um, the roundtables also followed a uniform format where the policy, the um, youth ambassadors presented their opening statements, and then the policymakers were given a chance to react. Um, the policymakers were formed a little bit based on the Google Doc from the workshops, like what was important to the to the ambassadors, but they weren't given the actual statements, so the reactions were a bit more on the spot. Um, this led, then led to a discussion um, that would last the rest of the time. We had prepared some questions for the discussion, but I don't think we ever used any of them um, because the participants were very motivated and already had lots of things that they wanted to bring to the policymakers. We kept the ratio of policymakers and participants relatively low. So um, the participants were only able to attend, I think it was two round tables. So it was about 20, 15 to 20 participants to two to three policymakers. And that was done to kind of keep it more personal. Um, and then the this sort of the round tables and the workshops led to the publication of policy papers, which um, could you please move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, also corresponded to our four topics and included a reflection on the workshop process, a reflection on the um, roundtable process and the discussion with pol um, policymakers, and then gave the, the ambassadors a chance to sort of restate their policy positions and demands and summarize everything having to do with their experience. And if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, we published the papers actually this morning. So they're all available online now. So if you wanna learn more and you can also see the policy papers, um, go to YIGF de and then like elizabeth said there's quite a lot of information also on our twitter page with the handle there yeah that's it from us thanks thank you very much elizabeth and demetria for introducing us to your initiative and congratulations on your great work and uh, right now, if you have any questions, it is time to ask them. And I think that to make uh, the fair share between people who watch us on site and online, uh, we would take the order of taking one uh, question from the floor here and one question uh, from the Zoom room. So you can come up with your questions if you want to. I think that in the Zoom room, you have also the possibility to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. I think there was a question in the chat. Uh, hello. I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I want to find out if the ambassador's program takes place every year 
and uh, when does application open? Thank you, uh, Enoch, uh, for, yeah, for, next for, Thank you. <laughs> for the question. So we are always in a bit of a, uh, how to say, precarious situation with our, um, with these youth programs. So for the past three years, every year, we uh, were lucky enough to, to um, get some funding by the uh, German um, Ministry for um, Economic Affairs and Energy, who was the host in 2019 of the IGF. For next year, um, we still don't know yet if there will be something like this. I, I hope so, certainly, that um, um, we can kind of come up with something. But apart from us, there's so many um, initiatives. The Internet Society does youth programs every year. I can does youth programs every year. So I suggest uh, you keep your eyes open, uh, not only towards us, but also towards other initiatives. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anna, for your question. And do we have any other questions? Oh, yes, I said, uh, Shadrach, please go ahead with your question. Okay, so I would like to ask how is um the German Informatics Society's um, initiative, which has been in place for three years now, how is it uh, primarily partnering with other initiatives like the NRIs, maybe the youth IGFs in maybe let's say um, Africa, maybe Ghana, how best are you maybe partnering with them to maybe assist them to also um, get to tap into the knowledge um, that your ambassadors will acquire. So I know of one or two colleagues who are involved in it. So how will this knowledge and partnership and also resources be uh, brought down to these uh, uh, um, individuals within uh, those initiatives? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, which is, I think, a central one to everything that all of us are doing, right? How do we get this on? on the ground. So um, in the past, what we have done is to kind of uh, share our learnings for, for this transfer um, with the people involved in the program, but also write it down. So for example, in 2019, we had a publication where some of these learnings on how to conduct um, these youth programs and how to enable people to then go forward and share their knowledge and experience in their own um, networks and, and contexts. Um, and I think that's all we can do is really to work together very closely. So to ask each other, to share our experiences, to invite each other to to some speaking engagements or, um, or something like that. But I think what really needs to happen, what we can't do, because we don't know the contexts, the, the political surroundings and the, the really the questions that the, the individual people have within them or carry them uh, uh, into the, the spheres is that we open this dialogue for people to really get ideas from each other and then apply them to to their context because I think it would be very much overstepping if I came for example to the Ghana Youth IGF and told you how things are done because I don't know how um, how your contexts are so it's really important to really um, support the transfer but not go overboard in um, kind of thinking that we know it all and uh, need to share this with everyone. Okay, thank you very much, Sadrach, for your question and Elizabeth for answering it. And as we don't have much time for more questions, uh, I would like to pass the floor to our next speaker, Marco Paloski, who will introduce us to the Digital Youth Jump Project. Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, just the presentation. Yeah, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Marco Pawlowski. I'm part of the Generation Connect uh, Europe uh, Youth uh, Envoy Group. And uh, we managed to successfully organize the first uh, digital youth jam, uh, which was held on 3rd of December uh, last Friday. Uh, the event was more together the European youth leaders and organizations uh, to discuss the 
our Generation Connect um, Europe uh, Youth Declaration that was drafted and presented in uh, early 2021. Uh, also, this event was uh, main focus like uh, to be like a grassroots platform for uh, European youth to gather, discuss, uh, learn, and network from each other. The event served as a uh, the event served as a, another step toward the journey of Generation Connect Europe Envoy uh, Group to the World Telecommunication Development Conference, which will be held in June 2022, and also the uh, European Year of Youth 2022, as decorated by the European Commission. So the event was, next slide, please. Um, the event was divided in four sessions, which were, of course, connected with the youths, but on different thematic topics. Uh, the first one was in the youth voices in the policy making. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here we had um, relevance of the youth voices in the policy making that has been pointed out in this session by Victoria Savitska, which is the digital consultant in the uh, Europe Office for ITU. And also we have a diff how to say different um, opinions and different ideas, I would say, from the, the speakers. First, I will point out the Bojana uh, Vishakruna, which is advisor for creative industries, tourism and science at the office of the prime minister uh, from the Republic of Serbia, which she pointed out that uh, the Serbian government are doing um, promoting uh, and open calls to include youth voices in the policy making with uh, using the public calls like uh, social media. They pointed out that they are using Twitter so they can go to the youth people in a more direct way. Also here we have um, uh, Valeria Yonan, Deputy Minister for Euro, Euro Integration at the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine, which pointed out that uh, the social media are very good and uh, uh, very good to reach to the youth people because she is also uh, active uh, social media um, a member and that they are using a lot of things now uh, to get engaged with the youth in this uh, uh, social media so they can include them in the policy making process. Um, Aubesa Demesher, uh, which was security, cyber security associate at KPMG Norway, has pointed out the importance of including youth in the legislation process regarding the cyber security. Uh, the main reason we have two, let's say, main reasons for this. The first one is that the youths are the, the one that are raised with the with the digital uh, world and also they are born in the digital world. And the second one is that we saw a lot of um, suitable profiles from the youth, especially in the deal with the cybersecurity world after the COVID-19 pandemic has become more vulnerable to cybersecurity attacks because a lot of meetings like this one uh, are doing now uh, online, especially our confidential data and uh, a lot of other sensitive data. And uh, the, the, the session we uh, concluded is uh, additionally with uh, Jurgis Vikaus, which is Chief Specialist of the Resources and Services Division at the Commission Regulatory Authority of the Republic of Lithuania, which he explained how he got into politics at a very young age. Uh, he encouraged other youth as well to take any chance that they have if, of course, they are uh, they like to go in this kind of policy making and to do not wait because now governments more and more are getting the youths uh, involved in those kind of policies and legislation involvement because in the end, uh, the de decisions and legislation that will be implemented will be affected in mostly by, by the youth. Uh, in the second session that was uh, uh, on the event, next slide please, we were talking, it was more on the digital entrepreneurship and the youth entrepreneurship. Uh, where uh, it was a conversation with a young leader. From the other side, it was um, Luke Gavaning, which is a member of ITU Global Visionary Board. And from the other side, what was Mr. Taha Bava, who is co-founder and CEO of Got wow. uh, They the, the whole discussion was mainly on, uh, I would say, three points, uh, three important points. Uh, the first one was the digital ecosystem that now uh, we have within the reach it, that is very powerful and that allows the youth entrepreneurship to access a massive number of resources and to be able to fulfill their uh, goals. Also here is the come that the entrepreneurship can do a lot of collaboration and communications with other stakeholders, mentors, other entrepreneurs to share experience through the world using the digital ecosystem. Uh, the importance of accepting failure was the second and maybe for me, my opinion, maybe most uh, important thing is that 
it is a, uh, that uh, a lot of people um, pointed out, Mr. Bava, uh, that uh, a lot of uh, young entrepreneurships, uh, inter entrepreneur, uh, fail on their first try to fulfill their uh, their business or their idea. But this is not the how to say that, that much bad because the this experience is the probably one of the best ways to learn. And he insisted that these failures, as far as possible, should always is, uh, involve assumable risk that, that won't uh, block you for continuing to working on your projects and ideas. And finally, in connection with the failure, defining what success uh, looks like, looks like uh, in equally important. It is equally important. Sometimes can be like a monetary success, but it also implies community impact or environmental impact. And we should take uh, advice uh, from the young uh, entrepreneurships that from this personal point of view, in this, uh, not always the stories of successful entrepreneurships are most inspiring ones. That uh, your own opinion is also the, the, the ones that should always predominate. And even told those from the experts in the field of stakeholders and uh, other mentors should be considered. Uh, next slide, please. This is the third session, which was how youth groups uh, are involved and what are their role in Europe. Uh, here, here we have a, a few speakers which were pretty good and it were involving different, um, different points, uh, which we can also see in the slides. The first one is that uh, regarding the relevance of importance in, uh, of uh, impact of the youth engagement, Maria Pia Napoletano, member of the Young, young European Ambassadors Coordinator at EU Neighbors uh, East, pointed out the value of intergenerational communications and cooperation as the experience of those that have a longer career path can be useful to inspire and guide youth that might have the initiative and the energy, but not a broad perspective as the more experienced, experienced expert might have. Here, in correlation to this one, Valentina Sabuco and uh, Mirvas Vafa, members from the UNESCO um, Global Youth Community, highlighted the cooperation between the worldwide organization. In this case, UNESCO, with the different local communities, has a key role in conjunction of both uh, points of the view can lead to great significant changes. Um, the existence of polarization among the youth, Maria Pia Napolitano addressed the relevance of implementing practical education inside the organization organizations regarding of the importance of considering different points of view and incorporating them as a useful information to come up with initiatives. Following the line, Valentina Suko pointed out that diversity opinions can lead to new solutions or new perspectives uh, to investigate an issue that have not been considered before. Uh, in the relation of inclusiveness, there was a big, big, I would say, point that Valentina pointed out to the difficulties that might arise trying to reach out some communities whose digital capacity is less developed, development, that are isolated because of their location. She recognized the importance of trying to reach out to these communities and, as they should also benefit uh, from the worldwide dialogue. Alex Cook states that the inclusiveness is not a key point after the COVID pandemic as the digital and economical inequalities have become more obvious. And the last session that we had, next slide, please. It was for the Youth Declaration Open Discussion, where um, uh, I was also part of it. Uh, the Youth Declaration was uh, provided by the Generation um, Connect Youth um, uh, European Group uh, in January and February this year. Uh, we just presented here what were the topics that we were mostly working on and what are the next steps. So our first place uh, was pointed out that uh, youth uh, is the most affected uh, generation regarding the digital transformation as it is on a daily basis, but not, not, uh, not only in the professional and the personal environment. We have focused on capacity development and digital inclusion regarding uh, solving capacity building issues. They proposed, uh, uh, we proposed the bottom up multi-stakeholder advisory group to come up with a common digital skill curriculum in the European countries together with the offer of high quality certificate courses and promoting closer uh, links between the industry and academia. To address the digital inclusion, gender, age, and geographical location should be also considered. Most of the address, um, most of the times, the barriers that generate digital inequalities among the individual are not under control and 
uh, here is where the importance of the solving the, this inequality comes into place. Afterwards, we uh, talk about the cybersecurity as the one of the main uh, points that we wrote in the declaration was, uh, was presented as a very relevant topic as a great part of the society. Uh, society daily interaction take place online. We already saw this uh, after the pandemic. I mean, we are still in the pandemic, but uh, during the, the pandemic and still going on. Some of the proposed initiatives to face the issues that might arise are creating safer internet centers in non-European Union countries, but in, European, uh, in Europe, establishing common cybersecurity capacity building uh, standards for European countries and promotion of media literacy and cybersecurity at the European level. We have shown uh, our awareness regarding the fact that very crucial topics has not been totally covered in the new declaration, and we have encouraged you to propose more ideas to improve, complete, and update the declaration with the new issues or topics that might have uh, framed during this year, because the declaration was uh, done in February 2021. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here you can find on the link, I will also post in the chat in the Zoom, but uh, the ones that are presented uh, in person, uh, you can use the, the short link to access the youth declaration. And if you haven't read it, please uh, do when you have time. And um, you are free, feel free to suggest improvements and uh, adding other topics. Uh, I am not sure, but uh, I guess that uh, the next year will uh, be, uh, from the IT will be another uh, Generation Connect group. So if someone is interested, they can uh, take a look and follow the ITU uh, Office for Europe so to get more updates on this one. And the next slide, and that was from my side to, to present. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marco, for sharing with us the details of this very recent event. And uh, as I just got an information that this event will be 15 minutes shorter than uh, it is put in the agenda, I would like to propose that we will skip the questions part uh, after uh, each speaker, just in order to give every speaker uh, their time. And if you have any questions, just write them in the chat and with the annotation to which speaker you would like to address them. And in the end, if we will have time for those questions, uh, there you will have an opportunity to ask them. And also, I would like to ask our on-site audience to also write their questions on Zoom in the chat. Thank you very much, and thank you for understanding. Uh, so as the next speaker, I would like to invite Aileen Sias from Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. The floor is yours, Aileen. Thank you very much, Emilia. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, apologies, I'm connecting from my phone. Um, so today I'm very happy to be here with you uh, talking about youth engagement. And um, I'm very happy also to hear from our colleagues, dear colleagues. Uh, um, so let's go uh, directly into the slides. Um, could you help me with that? Just a second. Are, are, yeah, there, okay. there will be slides. Just a second. OK. Um, hey, let's begin. Um, so my name is uh, Eileen Cejas, I'm from Argentina, and today I'm speaking to you on behalf of the Youth Coalition Inter Governance as the steering committee member representing the GRULAC uh, group. So now uh, let's go to the second one where I will uh, explain to you about the Youth Coalition Inter Governance. Uh, so the Youth Coalition Inter Governance was established to advocate uh, for the voice of children, uh, young people, young professionals also at the IGF. Um, so um, as you see uh, why um, we are talking about the youth coalition right now, because um, our dynamic coalition uh, was uh, formed in right now, um, it has been 11 years old. So, you know, we have a lot of history within the IGF. Um, for us is the natural space for young, interested people 
uh, to talk about internal governance related issues, um, to think of the IGF as a platform to engage with all the stakeholders in equally footing to amplify the youth voices on the several topics that are within the umbrella of the youth engagement in internal governance. Um, so as I was saying, um, we have every year a meeting slot at every forum uh, to bring together the youth stakeholders from all around the world. And we discuss about the different issues and we network together. Um, so um, let's move to the third one. Okay, awesome. So who can be part of the Youth Coalition of Interim Governance? Anyone starting from 18 years old to 35 years old can participate. In order to be considered as a member, you have to join our mailing list. And we also consider uh, that, you know, uh, also young people in the heart. So uh, people that have more than 35 years old can join our mailing list as observers. That means that our dynamic coalition is open to everyone. And you can also join our Facebook group. Of course, I will share the link later. Um, um, the mailing list is an open space for you, so you can, you know, you can discuss about the topic that you are interested in. You can also share about your youth initiative, activity, or events you are preparing in the upcoming weeks. So um, you have to see it as as your space, so you can build this. Uh, you are the builder uh, of the space. As an active member, you can also apply for a position within the steering committee during the elections period. Uh, of course, um, you can join us um, on Friday when we will have our session, uh, but just to be very short, uh, taking into consideration the time. Every year we have an elections period within the five, five, sorry, the six weeks after the IGF. So anyone can apply who has considered an active member uh, well, everything is on the charter that we have, uh, so you can take a look. And uh, you will um, we, you will be applying to represent one of the five regional groups uh, recognized by the UN. So let's move to the following one. Okay, thank you. So uh, I I imagine you have a lot of questions on how this uh, study committee dynamic function. So uh, after we have a, the elections video, the candidates, the selected candidates are posted on our mail list. Uh, that means that uh, the new steering committee uh, is already um, prepared to, you know, um, suggest different activities. Um, you know, we have like a handover, well, you can imagine that sort of thing from the um, former steering committee. Um, so uh, there's also something that I want to share with you that unlike other dynamic coalitions, we don't have like a chair who um, decides everything. That means that all steering committee members are in equal position. So everyone uh, proposed different activities for the communities they represent. Um, and here I, I bring three examples. Uh, like um, last year we spoke at the Africa IGF um, both last year and this year, we participated at the Youth Like IGF. And last year and this year, also we have a day series session at the Youth Dig. Um, and we also talk about um, with uh, young people from Europe. Um, other important thing that is, uh, is relevant to mention is that we participate at the Dynamic Co uh, Coalitions Coordination Group meetings. That means that uh, well, if you are aware a little bit about the uh, dynamic coalitions, that um, every month they have their meetings where they propose different activities to uh, strengthen the position of the dynamic coalitions uh, within the work streams of the IGF. Um, so in there we uh, represent the youth voice and we also advocate. Um, also, well, I think I already mentioned that we that we have a speaking slot, uh, and for that, uh, every year we submit a, a report uh, where we explain what we did uh, during the year. So um, by the next year, we will have this um, place available 
also um, we submit uh, like a paper where we will explain what we'll be addressing at the main session of the Dynamic Coalitions um, that is happening on a few years, few years, <laughs> sorry, a few days from now. So you can also check us there. Um, so let's go to the following one, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so why is important to participate at the Youth Coalition for Governance? Well, first of all, to network with like-minded people like you that have the same interest uh, in these topics, or you can also learn about new topics, why not? Um, well, that's, a, that's something that I want to, to mention that is very important, especially when we are at the IPF, uh, that we uh, build these working groups to submit work proposals um, for the IGF. So that's one thing that we did, for example. And um, last year, this year, uh, it worked very well because we have several sessions. So that means that the youth is represented uh, at the forum. Um, other point that is very important is that uh, you can join different youth activities uh, that are happening around the world. Um, and most importantly, that you can advocate for youth participation. Um, so yeah, let's jump directly into the uh, YCIG activities. So that's the following and the other one, sorry. So yeah, this is a, a photo from, from 2019, uh, from our Dynamic Coalition uh, meeting. So moving to the following one, I'm going to make a quick recap of the things that we did uh, this year. So for example, uh, we made a questionnaire to understand about the uh, needs from our community, about what type of activity we can do to engage and the, the most positive option was about conducting uh, some youth webinar. Um, so that's on the following slide. Uh, so we conducted two webinars. One was about the environmental sustainability and the other one was about inclusive internal governance ecosystem. Um, luckily, we were able to have some representatives of the BPF and also about other dynamic coalitions. So that was very important for us, you know, to highlight about the importance of uh, interconnecting the different work streams of the IGF. And well, as I was saying, we submitted some sessions for the IGF. We also um, work in, in collaboration with UNESA and the UN uh, Mayor Group for Children and Youth on preparing a policy brief called towards uh, a new social contract, reducing inequalities through digital public goods and youth collaboration for the sustainable development goals. That um, I guess is going to be online in a couple of weeks. Um, well, overall about the youth engagement at the IGF. Um, well, I mentioned that we have uh, some sessions. We also uh, spoke at the, and we will be speaking also at some NRI sessions and DC uh, main sessions as well. Um, so uh, I want to also mention about the mentorship at the Internet Society IGF Youth Ambassadors Program uh, that this year is the second time that we are running it and we are very happy uh, because we are also uh, helping other young people um, to participate and encourage them uh, to speak up at the IGF. Um, well, as I was saying, we have a day zero session at the Eurodic. We also partnered uh, with the Youth IGF Poland for the organization of the Youth Summit, um, including the coordination of working groups. So of course, we are inviting you for the following uh, session happening in a couple of hours. Uh, we participated at the open course of the Youth Like IGF in English and Spanish. Um, we also, well, as I was saying, we participated at some DC sessions last year and this year. And that's all from me. So I'm going to uh, share the link of all of our social media. And um, thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Eileen, for sharing with us uh, your initiative. We have plenty of interesting opportunities for young people. And uh, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions for Eileen, just please write them in the chat and mention that uh, those are questions for Eileen. And right now, I would like to pass the floor to our last but not least speaker, Juan Payar Valesquez, uh, who will tell us about the youth observatory, so the youth sick. Uh, I will, I can see. Okay, perfect. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, let me share the. Okay, just a minute for the technical stuff. <laughs> Okay, so while we are waiting, I will tell you a joke. No, just kidding, I won't. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that soon we should be able to uh, continue. Well, uh, I can start if until you share the, the, the slides. Well, the Jewish Observatory born in 2015 after the Internet Governance Forum that was in Brazil that year in Joao Pessoa uh, was the result of the reunion of the Jew, of the Jew people in, in that was in the in the in the internet governance for that year. Uh, in 2015 in December, uh, the uh, observatory formally born and from 2000, from January and 2016 is is the you or you special interest groups from internet society. What we do there is to promote uh, initiatives from job Jew people uh, around the world and in, to include them in, in internet governance ecosystems and help them to be more at the in the in the internet governance forums and in regional, local, and national con and national contests and also incre uh, increase the participation of you in all these spaces. Uh, how, why we do this is because we see that you is, an, an es is essential, uh, sorry, it's an essential part of this ecosystem. Probably we don't, we actually uh, getting too much tokenized in some contexts, uh, but we think that we had to have a more active role inside of the Internet Governance Forum. And that's why we, during these years, this last year, we had several ways to show the work of you people. One of those was the book, uh, the you book was released in 2017. Uh, the you atlas that was in 2090 during the IGF in Berlin, we released the you atlas where uh, a lot of uh, Joe people from all over the world share their experience in, in, in internet governance in their countries and also in global contests. Um, 
Also, we developed a competition in 2019 called uh, Creative Commons competition, no, Creative Networks competition. Uh, actually, I was part of the Creative Networks competition. That was the reason that I'm, I'm here right now representing the Joe Observatory was done to that. Um, with that was an uh, application of different projects from people that were already working in related topics to internet governance, but they didn't know that were related to internet governance. So the, the final product of this was uh, to bring those people to Berlin, made them part to the youth summit that was in Berlin, and also uh, create a project that could impact in the, in the youth people in, uh, in the future. Uh, after that, uh, we decided in 2018, because we were really focused in Latin America, because we created this, the observatory in the Latin American context. In 2018, we decided to internationalize the observatory. And with that, we create a lot, create new commissions and new position inside, the, inside of the observatory. And we had to start a new election and a new board of person that was uh, divided by the five different zones of the UN, again, UN systems. So after that, we started to get more involved in projects collaborating with the EU coalition or historical government. For example, we work with them a lot and presenting projects together in in the Joe like IGF and Euro D also with with the women there in the uh, and especially here in the Internet Governance Forum. Um, this year we will partner with the Yo project initial the we the Yo Summit project and we are part of the working groups uh, organizers or coordinators, and we actually organize pretty much uh, along with them and your coalition all the what it is, the youth summit of this year. And uh, also continuing with the internationalization for first time, the you like IGF, that the regional IGF from Latin America have was, was funded by in, uh, Internet Society Foundation the after this edition that happened for first time and so that allowed us to have a better platform to showcase what we're doing in latin america and also to formalize uh, an open course that we start to do in last year about the about internet governance uh, so now we have a platform that is a seminar or a school about internet governance divided in four units uh, the, or things that we think that are necessary and, and part of the future of the internet ecosystem. Um, that, will be, um, that will be pretty much what we're doing right now with the Joe Observatory. Uh, we hope it's still being part of internet society as the US standing group. We don't know yet if we're going to be the US standing group, but you are all invited to be part because we are going to continue incidents in the Internet Governance Forum for sure. Yeah, you can find us in Facebook as a observatory and in, the, in, in Twitter exactly the same. And yeah, that's pretty much where we have all contests. Thank you to everyone. Thank you very much, and thank you for going on, even though some technical issues. Uh, so, as I said before, uh, we have a few minutes left, even eight minutes, so quite a good time. So, if you have any questions, uh, I will just uh, ask Rafa if we have any questions in the chat. Uh, there's no time to ask them. We'll start with... There are no questions on the chat. Okay, so if any of you has any questions uh, to any of our speakers.
Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so thank you. Um, my actually is not um, a question, but as um, we are talking about the youth initiatives, we've all worked together, YCIG, youth, um, SIG, um, uh, youth, yeah, all the youth initiative, we've all come together. And this year, as the project youth summit to be going on, um, four o'clock p.m. We would like to invite all of you, both online and on site here, to meet so that we all come together and discuss issues related to the youth, and that by the time we live here, we all have some solutions to some of the issues youth face. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shadra. Uh, yeah, you all are all invited, and uh, I I'm really so happy that. This year, we managed to have a coalition of so many youth initiatives. I think it is one of the first time something like this happened. So just feel invited to today's youth summit. And I think that uh, we have a question. Yes, it's a comment uh, referring to the same you said, uh, Nicolas Fimarelli for the recording. Uh, I think that these different uh, youth initiatives uh, now are, are like, uh, we, we are like centralizing uh, all these initiatives. Uh, for the first time, I think. In the past, there exists this dynamic coalition, but at the end, we, we are like, uh, we, we have like the same uh, objectives in mind in, in the different youth initiatives. And there are a lot of uh, other <laughs> youth initiatives that maybe are not here at this session because there are a lot of parallel sessions at the same time. But I could say that from Asia, from Africa, we have a lot of different youth initiatives. But the most important thing is that uh, instead of the pandemic, we, we could achieve these activities, right? Like virtually with all the work and a lot of participants were there in the youth ex policy makers, all the organizing team of the youth summit. So at the end, it's very important to, to maintain our engagement and well, in the future, try to think uh, how to, to do this uh, as, an, uh, as a hybrid thing. And in my opinion, I think that maybe we, we could think about having some hubs like physical hubs and trying to connect these physical hubs. That could be something that, that will, will be very appreciated, I think, uh, for the people because uh, virtual meetings are a little of boring and people uh, uh, know that there is a, another added, added value when, when having a, a physical meeting. And yes, I think that so. My comment is, is that so uh, maintain the, the spirit and, and the engagement. And I think this, the, the future of the youth initiative will be uh, that, like more participation, more collaboration, and for sure all uh, all these ideas, for example, from the youth summit about the messages or the or the policy papers are things that are making changes uh, uh, worldwide, because that that is the way that, that you need to have the voices and participate more, and yes, let the leaders or the high level uh, important people to hear uh, our voices. That is the most important thing, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicolas, for your comment. Uh, if any of our speakers would like to add something, I actually um, would like to hear from you because now we heard about all our different um, initiatives, but maybe you would like to share also about your process this year with the Youth Summit without spoiling it too much because as we heard, the session will be happening, but I'm sure there was there were so many uh, important lessons learned and things that you could also maybe bring bring to us. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would be very interested to hear how that was for you. Uh, yes, sure. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me the floor. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, but I think, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, today, because we have this youth, youth summit, so I'm really <laughs> in many channels at the same time. Yeah, but so just to share it with you very briefly, uh, how the process looked like. Mm, I think it has all started almost a year ago when we have had an opportunity to hear a lot of comments after the last year's uh, IGF and the youth summit. And what we decided is that this year to make this summit really multi-approach, we that's why we would like to introduce other youth initiatives. Uh, we were con contacted by the representative of Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, who told us that the two organizations that has presented uh, today 
would like to cooperate with us. And this is how it started. We just started talking and then it evolved. And I think we have had a really great energy uh, between us. So it was all came up naturally how this project evolved because to be honest, we just started with a thought that we would like to, this year we would like to put more focus uh, into the policy making processes, into how we could get young people more involved into the policy making, how we could connect them with the decision makers, something that you also put in the central point of your project. And we just started to build around that idea. So then the idea of points of action, which are the final results of our project, just came up that we would like to focus not only on creating postulates uh, of solutions, but also on thinking already to whom we can address those postulates. So to introduce this lobbying way of thinking into our work. And uh, today at the Youth Summit, uh, we and you will have an opportunity to see the results of our work. And I think it's not the end today. We want to introduce you to our work because we want to continue on. We have already talked <laughs> about it. Yeah, that we can think about combining our project because we have, I think, quite common goal. So yeah, so we want to invite even more people because in our project, we could only invite uh, like 80 candidates to keep it in the camera format, but we would like to hear even more voices, like as many voices as possible. So I hope that really after this youth summit, we will have the next steps during which we can all have all together some consultations some brainstorming so as it started it just started with some idea and then it started evolving we really hope that the same will, will happen afterwards like that yeah Pedro do you finish no <laughs> I will have a lot of talking today <laughs> yeah so <laughs> please go ahead I had a, a short, oh, sorry, <laughs> a short question to everyone. That today we actually have kind of a cacophony, cacophony of a multitude of youth initiatives, youth organizations uh, going around uh, similar objectives. And although this is helpful for one side, it's interesting for one side of diversification and uh, regionalizing some kind of initiatives. It, there is also a downside on that, that sometimes we have some uh, double efforts through the same ending. So we lose a lot of energy. There are some conflict, uh, conflicts between uh, similar projects. And the question is, what do you all think it's necessary to avoid? Is what's the main barriers to have like the U5F uh, summit is a good uh, example because there are a lot of youth initiatives that get together towards the same goal. So what do we need to have more projects like that, more initiatives like that, where these different youth organizations come together to achieve a similar goal? Because that's the central point, that's the main point when you're talking about um, decision making and this part of uh, positive lobbying and getting um, influence on these other aspects of the, of impactful movements in the in the internet governance ecosystem okay does anybody uh, wants to take the floor first sure <laughs> i have some thoughts on this um and they are not very elaborate they are very basic um what you're saying is actually very important in terms of how we bring our different efforts together because I think there's a lot of value in having parallel processes because we all reach different people we reach different people in different ways we give uh, different types of people an outlet to to come into this because 
what we can't forget, um, those of us who have been in internet governance for, for years, it might be so so normal and just um, we we are very much into in this whole um, circular motion of, of good doing the same things. But the value, I think, in doing uh, parallel projects uh, is that we bring different people into this cycle. Um, and then I think what is really beautiful to see is that over the past few years, not only have we started working together a lot more, but also through working together and, and showcasing that there are so many young people interested in this, we could also convince the non-youth that this is something to look out for and that young people need to sit uh, on the main sessions and that uh, youth needs space in these meetings that is not only um, tokenized and is not only on the sidelines. So I think both is true. We need to work together and then we also, we cannot say we need to centralize everything to be more powerful because I, I think there's uh, a lot of value in, in doing different things for different people. Well, I can agree that, uh, that DOSIN has centralized the joint initiatives because I believe that having more regional and point of views actually help to con construct better uh, joint initiatives and to bring more people to the conversation and to enrich the, uh, the internet government ecosystem. We had to take account that, for example, the way that we see internet governance in Latin America is probably uh, quite different for what we how we see it in in Africa or in, in Europe. So we had to take in account the context what is developed, what is where we are. So uh, we can work together in some projects because it's good to work together because we have similar goals that is pretty much being like a, a a new stakeholder in the table. I don't know if pretty much is, I don't know if that what we want, but I think we are like targeting to that, to be one of the stakeholders. So, uh, and having that in count, uh, for me, both things are good. Continue working for or uh, for all size as different organizations in different regions, and also try to bring work together. Thank you very much. And if any of our online speakers would like to take the floor. Okay. Yeah, so from my side, I would like just to say that I agree with Elizabeth and Juan shared. Uh, what I think that the most important thing is that in the end, we can all cooperate with each other, we can have a discussion with each other, and that we don't treat each other as competitors, but we are just wanting to share our ideas with each other and take the benefit from all the work that has been done by each initiative. And yeah, I really hope that this IGF, I think it is already happening even in this panel, that we can all, as I said, benefit from our work we have done as different initiatives. Yes, yes, please go ahead. We have three minutes of just for one question. Uh, hello everyone, this is Daniel Hayat from Pakistan. So I don't have uh, a question, but I have a suggestion. Uh, and the suggestion I'm giving is on the basis of uh, all the questions that everybody asked. And if I could summarize it in few words, that is everybody wants, uh, you know, like we all have the same goal and everybody wants that we all come together and maybe have some sort of uh, an umbrella, not organization or a community where all the like-minded people uh, we can continue the dialogue that we are having today because uh, just to give you a reference, for example, at uh, World Economic Forum, we have this community of global shapers. So that continues. The dialogue 
is continuing there. At uh, St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, we have Friends for Leadership. So we can have something similar uh, here, maybe something like uh, I, uh, IGF, a youth collective, where all of us come together, share the ideas, and continue this dialogue in the future as well. So this is my suggestion. And uh, it cannot be in the form of organization or maybe a community of like-minded leaders. So that's a suggestion from my side. And we can continue this by communicating with the, probably the next country, which is going to host the IGF, you know, so we can continue this youth project kind of thing in the future as well. And what were the outcomes of today or the conversations that we had, we can share that probably with the policymakers of the next IGF country that is going to host this. So I think that will be a very brilliant initiative that we all can come together with the same agenda, considering the fact that we can uh, take the input from the localized or the regional bodies that we have in our own uh, specific countries. Because uh, as far as I know, we have representation of Asia, America, of Europe, uh, all these uh, different continents. So we all are here and we can think about it, how to make it sustainable so that we can continue the dialogue in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. And I think it is a very interesting suggestion that we should definitely explore after the youth summit and even during the IGF, because yeah, the goal also of all this work this year would be to have the continuation of it until the next uh, youth summit and the next IGF in the Ethiopia and then in Tokyo. And then I don't remember <laughs> where is the, in 2023. Yeah, but I, I, I think it's a very interesting thought. So we have only 24 seconds left, so I will just do a quick wrap up. So thank you very much to all our speakers. It was amazing to listen to you and about your wonderful initiatives. And I think that today we have had just a very good start of the dialogue. Maybe not a start because it is already on, but we have a great start at this IGF of the Youth Dialogue. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's time, <laughs> it's time for clapping. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thank you very much, your amazing audience. And thank you for your all wonderful comments.